Okay, so we're going through another essay question, 20 mark question. Um, this one is as follows. In July 2016, Apple's share of the UK market for smartphones was 38%. Evaluate whether such a high market share for one company is in the consumer interest. Use appropriate diagrammatic analysis in your answer. So a couple of things to look at here. First of all, um, apart from the standard, uh, watch the previous video if you haven't about the structure itself. So I'm, this is a bit of additional information. So this question is slightly different and there's something you have to pay attention to here. First of all, it's specifically saying Apple. It's named a company, which means from now on, you have to explain your points completely contextualized. And to the point where you're sort of, you know, saying, okay, this is a bit much. You must, must, must. Every single point has to be from the case of uh, the point of view of Apple, okay? And then the second thing is this, use appropriate diagrammatic analysis. If it specifies a diagram, that, that means you will be capped, you will not be able to get to the top um, band unless you use a diagram of some sort, okay? And do it well. Um, so if it specifies a diagram, you will be capped unless you include an appropriate one, okay? Um, so obviously, I mean, we were going to do a diagram anyway, so that's not really um, a, an issue. But just just do bear in mind that these are the the difference between this one and the one we've done previously. Is the other one did not specify a company, nor did it specify a diagram. But in this one, you know, you, there's going to be issues unless you do that. Okay, so again, we do the same thing. We paraphrase the question to make it easier to understand because there's a lot in here. We're saying monopolies are good for consumers. That's essentially what it's asking, right? And so as a result, we've got to make sure we've understood the uh, opposite or evaluating point. So monopolies are bad for consumers. So we've kind of boiled it down to that. It's asking evaluate, which similar to um, critically examine is just going to mean discuss both sides. OK, so if you don't discuss both sides, that will be incorrect. You will be capped once again. But I mean, that's not even something that should be on your radar, to be honest. So, um, OK, and then the general evaluation paragraph that I'm going to have in mind is what situations change the general theory that we've discussed above? Are there any special cases? So um, and then the judgment, obviously, you have to answer the question and say, yes, Apple is in the best interest of consumers or no, they are not. OK, so it's important that you do that. So I have done a general plan for you. Um, let's see if you agree or what you think I'm missing or anything that you think, OK, is there how to improve it? Introduction, again, we have to get rid of any vague language, OK? In general, vague language is going to be anything that's normative or anything where it can um, cover a broader range of definitions than just one specific thing. So in this case, I think it's going to be consumer interest, OK? That's, that's quite uh, important. And then obviously, as well, we have to understand what type of market Apple is operating in. I hope you all can recognize that this is a monopoly market. I've put oligopoly here just because although by definition, Apple is a monopoly because it has greater than 25% market share, it is, I think, more likely, actually not an oligopoly, to be a duopoly from our knowledge of the UK smartphone market, it's quite clear that um, Samsung and Apple are definitely a duopoly of some, at least I hope it is. Should we have a just a quick look? Uh, UK smartphone market um, share by share. So yeah, Apple, oh well, Apple has really massively increased its lead since, um, since 2016, which is when this question is asking about. Apple apparently now has um, something like 50% market share. So, you know, that is enormous and that is an un, uh, you know, that's an unconditional monopoly for sure. But um, the next one up is Samsung, uh, which does hold 29% market share almost, which is again, a huge amount, yeah? So I would I would, I would, would actually call that more of a duopoly because the, the results would be that way, okay? So it's just, you know, we'll, we'll characterize it as a monopoly, but we can always um, use this as evaluation or extra analysis. So, you know, we're gonna characterize the market, high barriers, price setters, profit max, et cetera. And then I'm just going to explain consumer interest. What do I mean by it? I mean price, choice, quality, and allocative efficiency. I might mean a couple of other things like, you know, um, uh, bonus points and I don't know, uh, 
extra good customer service or insurance, but you know, generally speaking, we're gonna analyze it this way, okay? So onto my paragraph one, I immediately stated the point I'm trying to make. So monopolies are bad for consumers. Um, and then I've done my point A, I'm starting from monopoly and I wanna to get to high price, okay? Well, I essentially, I wanna to get to bad for consumers really, but um, I, that's the link that I'm trying to make. So I've done my arrow kind of mechanism. So I started with monopoly, price setting power, the diagram, here I'm introducing immediately, explaining diagram which shows comparison of perfect competition and monopoly. Again, if you don't know what that looks like, I'll include a little picture of it somewhere in the description or something. Um, so less consumer surplus, higher price, bad for consumers, yeah? I would probably draw this consumer surplus, I would indicate it on the actual diagram. You can, again, I'll include it, but you can, you can actually draw it on, which would make your diagram even more sophisticated, which is always a plus. Um, added onto this, I'm saying further away from allocative efficiency, I'll define allocative efficiency as, you know, price equals marginal cost, um, and indicate the allocatively efficient point on the diagram and then show how monopoly is less efficient and say that is bad for consumers. I'll probably also draw on that welfare loss as a result of that. Again, I'll indicate that on the diagram. So there's my KAA. Um, uh, what's missing in here right now is specific um, uh, application to Apple. So I'll show you the paragraph I've written um, first just to show you what I mean by you must apply this kind of stuff, okay? So here's the intro. Um, Apple is likely to be a monopoly firm in the market for smartphones, uh, in the UK market for smartphones. In, uh, I might even just be just a bit more specific and say in 2016, uh, as they have more than 25% market share, this type of market is characterized by high barriers to entry and exit, price setting power, and firms like Apple are typically profit maximizers. Consumer interest will be considered to be changes to price, choice, and quality of a good, as well as allocative efficiency, and whether it is reached is probably the better phrasing. Uh, okay, so that's the intro. I've cleared up everything I need to clear up. Again, I'm sandwiching my KAA, okay? So here, my first sentence is answering the question straight away. Monopolies such as Apple are not in the consumer interest. I've answered the question as they are likely to have higher prices than in other markets. If you look at my final sentence, therefore overall Apple is not likely to act in the interest of consumers. So again, I've sandwiched it, yeah? So let's look at what I've put in between for application. First of all, instead of just saying, because you mentioned I've specified in my first and last that it is Apple, okay? And then look what we've got in here. So monopolies are price setters, which means they have a downward sloping demand curve. They are able to set a higher price uh, as there are fewer substitutes for smartphones. I should really put Apple as. Apple is able to set a higher price as there are fewer substitutes for smartphones. Furthermore, Apple is likely to have highly inelastic demand as they have very strong brand loyalty. They can set a higher price than other monopoly firms as a result of this. So I'm, I'm specifying in the case of Apple, we all know Apple, we all know that it's got a certain brand associated with it. And as a result, they, I mean, they do charge high prices, don't they? So it's the result of it. Um, they set a price of PM as opposed to PPC as seen in a diagram. Here I'm just kind of talking through the diagram. It's very important, as I've mentioned, to incorporate that into your work. This is a higher price than would be seen in a perfectly competitive market. This reduces the amount of consumer surplus to the triangle indicated. Furthermore, the monopoly price is not allocatively efficient um, and there is a welfare loss as shown in the diagram. Therefore, overall, Apple is not likely to act in the interest of consumers. So you can see the contextualization going on here for the KAA. I'm trying to say points that really pertain to Apple as the example set to me. And this can't just be in your KAA, it's got to be in your evaluation as well, okay? So if you look, I have evaluated the opposite side here. So low price, monopolies equals low price, which is best interest for consumers. So the, the plan is as follows, monopoly equals economies of scale, equals lower long run average cost, equals pass on savings to consumers, therefore lower price. And I've just mentioned the brand loyalty point again, but I might change that. Um, and then uh, furthermore, the reason I mentioned that is just to say, oh, they're unlikely to pass on the cost savings actually because um, you know they don't have to. So it's potentially low price, but it's potentially high price. Um, if we pop down to what I've put here, um, again, sandwiched, okay? So monop 
please hold on that's the wrong bit again sandwich here so however yeah and i am doing the opposite side and then the last sentence this is in the interest of consumers just to show again the examiner that everything i do is carefully focused towards answering the question because there is obviously so much you could discuss with this type of topic but we're just showing that we know we know how to you know pick out and discriminate what is necessary and what's not necessary Okay, so I've just put here, however, monopolies like Apple produce a higher output as they are supplying 38% of the market. So using some of that application from what they gave me in the question, they are likely to benefit from economies of scale. Economies of scale are falling long run average costs as output increases. Same definitions as you always do. But in this case, I've put for Apple, this may come in the form of risk bearing economies of scale. For example, they now produce a variety of products, including smartphones, computers, and watches. This makes them less likely to fail. So spreading risk and putting down LRAC. So I've picked out one particular economy of scale and I've contextualized it to make sense for our example. You could have picked any of them. You could have done marketing and said they only need to run one ad campaign or whatever you like. But uh, either way, instead of just giving a definition, you're applying it. Um, with economies of scale, Apple is able to set a lower price as they can pass on cost savings to consumers. They can set any price between P1 and PM. And again, on the diagram, I would indicate a fall in long run average cost. I would actually shift it down and then show the new price kind of range that they have. Um, that again is a really sophisticated manipulation of a diagram that will just take you from your standard, you know, um, cost, uh, cost revenue diagram for a monopoly to we've done some really interesting things here. We've shown consumer surplus from unit one. So, you know, we're bringing in other elements. We've shown maybe a more inelastic demand curve to indicate um, that we've contextualized it to Apple. Um, we're showing welfare loss from allocative efficiency, which is showing that we know how to do that. And now we're shifting down down LRAC and showing a price range. So our diagram is doing a lot of things and it can actually score you a lot of marks um, because you've, 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 you know, you've manipulated it in such a clever way. So don't be afraid to just actually um, think of ways that you can show more things than just your standard profit box or loss box or whatever. Okay. So you can, you're, I hope you're starting to see now the difference when you contextualize something and when it asks for a diagram, the extra things you have to do. So I'll just take you through the rest of the plan. I haven't written the rest of it, but if you do um, think that it would be helpful, then I will, I will do that. But um, monopolies are bad for consumers. Um, and in this case, we are talking about monopolies, no incentive to improve quality. So again, let's talk about the link here. Monopoly, high market share, few substitutes, no choices available for consumers, no point improving quality, X in efficiency. Okay, so lots of nice things in here. And then the evaluation, the other side would be monopolies higher quality. So it would be monopolies might have threat of potential entrance. The smartphone market is actually much more likely to be contestable, which is characterized by it, you can have firms that look like monopolies, but uh, because of the threat of entry and shared technology, obviously it's more likely to act a mar like a market that needs to keep improving and has incentive to improve. And I think it's much more likely to be that way if you look at uh, new entrants such as like Huawei, um, Xiaomi, you know, these kind of um, uh, uh, producers. So therefore incentive to innovate um, evidence equals uh, Apple makes improved versions every year. So I've just popped in. I want to include that application point. Um, we could say they make improved versions every year. They're, I mean, basically the same thing, aren't they really? But um, anyway, so and then I'm additional point because it's still to do with quality. Um, monopoly, they make profit. Therefore, dynamic efficiency gains are possible. Um, we can show that on the diagram by shifting down our cost curves. Not possible in perfect competition therefore improved quality, therefore better for consumers. So you might be thinking, okay, where am I getting all these ideas from? You know, these aren't coming off the top of, well, I mean, yeah, I guess, but anyway, we're, we're coming from here, yeah? So what we'll look at is in here. So uh, Monopoly, so, um, you know, we're looking at costs and benefits to firms and consumers, right? So we're speaking specifically about, you know, productive, allocative, dynamic efficiency, as well as that we are talking about some of the things in here, um, which are, um, nah, it's not really. Okay, anyway, yeah, so it's just this section, market structures and contestability. So I can really discuss anything from these couple of pages and, you know, that would all be pretty good. 
Um, okay, so my final paragraph is the one which I'm using for general evaluation. So in here, I've just put other situations where Monopoly may be better for the smartphone market. So um, I've mentioned what we what I wanted to earlier, which is it's likely to be a duopoly alongside Samsung, therefore, or an oligopoly. Um, therefore, price and non-price strategies uh, are going to be used as a form of competition. Non-price, you know, aftercare service, um, stuff like product placement, all of these things, they're better for consumers, yeah, because they are working to make the experience better for us. Um, and then price strategies like limit pricing, predatory pricing, they're lower prices for consumers. So again, that's better, even though it's temporary, uh, you can discuss that. And then my last point is if it's a monopoly, government are uh, competition authorities, I should really say, um, are likely to uh, regulate um, and as a result, they might do something like um, performance targets or uh, quality standards or something, which is all better for consumers. So there's many things we can say. But again, this is my general evaluation bit where I'm more looking for like two marks per point as opposed to the kind of more sophisticated uh, evaluation up there. And then finally, overall, specifically for the smartphone market, Apple is not in the public interest. Da, 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 da. It's up to you. You know, you can put either side. But um, my point is you do have to make a judgment at the end. OK, so um, with this question, I hope that plan makes sense. So you can try writing it maybe. Um, but as a whole, exactly the same kind of structure as the previous one, 12 marks KA, 8 marks evaluation, sandwich your points, you know, make sure your diagrams are, are really cool, are like sophisticated. But then for this one, contextualization, you must be able to contextualize evaluation and KAA. Okay, I hope that was clear, but um, if you uh, would like to see the rest of that essay, just let me know.